Hey everyone, Sean here, and today, yes, I am busting out the tank top because it is hot. It's uh, July just started, and definitely we are in the heart of summer here in California. Uh, but what's also was hot, as in hot ass, was the live stream itself from 2.8. Alright, well, as you can tell already from the title of the video, I am definitely going to be talking about uh, the 2.8 live stream that happened uh, last night as I record this uh, f uh, on Twitch and on other various streams, depending on which region you're from. But unfortunately, the one on Twitch for us English speakers was hot ass, like I just said. Um, <laughs> it was really bad, man. It was like just. I thought my internet was bad or whatever the case may have been, but now a lot of people were saying the same thing. I was actually checking out um, like just some random streamers like channel just to make sure. Um, soon after, like everyone on, on Twitter was like saying the same thing too. Like, hey, is my live stream bad or is it, what's going on here? And yeah, so it was complete ass um, <laughs> when it came to the experience. And yeah, it was pretty bad. Like it was rewinding. It was like going back to the same like uh, what was it? The redeem code for um, Primo Jams and stuff like that. It was pretty. It was kind of hilarious, but at the same time, it was really bad to like try to di digest the information of said um, you know announcements and stuff like that. Uh, but yes, yeah. Well, that was all hot ass. At least they released the bot, and the bot itself was fine. Hopefully next time they can um, fix up the thing, make sure you know the live stream isn't so um, uh, garbage. <laughs> By the time they go, uh, get to the next one, uh, hopefully that'll be a thing. But yes, um, you know 2.8 is coming, and uh, nonetheless, and that uh, featured um, the new character Hazo, the new four-star uh, Enemo user. Uh, who does melee attacks uh, and we now have seen officially the animations the attack animations for Hazo and I think he looks great um, you know I'm, <laughs> unfortunately the word on the street was out already before um, uh, the official footage for for Hazo but nonetheless yes you know it, it you know it does help conf um, confirm the you know the official sort of like information stuff like that. Um, it's it's good to hear, you know, when you have the the big man sort of announce things and stuff like that, you know, officially for sure. And so yeah, you know, time, you know, most of the time when the uh, with these leaks, yes, in this case, I guess with Gen um, Genshin stuff, it is kind of uh, legit. But um, you know, you always should take these leaks with a grain of salt. It could be someone really clever with the modding and stuff like that, and you just never know. Uh, what's real and what's fake? So that's just uh, that's just how leaks can go. Um, you know that's happened with Street Fighter. It's happened with like all the other like uh, or a number of I should say a number of leaks that have come out in the past. Um, some of them have been real. Some of them have been fake. Just for the clicks and stuff like that, it happens. Anyway, enough of that. It's good to see Hazo in official light, and uh, uh, you know we've seen some of the what his abilities do and stuff like that so you know overall cool we get to hear what he sounds like um, I am I don't think I've heard him in Japanese just yet so I do want to check that out but I heard him in English and you know it's not bad it's you know pretty a decent voice I would say but nonetheless though I'm all about the animations the what he actually does and I think he looks incredibly cool and it's really awesome to see that the uh, melee sort of users or brawlers are coming into um, Genshin Impact now as playable characters and I hope to see more of that I hope to see more of something like that for um, in the future and I, I you know like I said previously in another video or in an older video I feel like the catalyst users are just gonna fill in the rest of like the weapons right so you know for example here uh, Hazel is going to be the brawler um, otherwise where else could we he or see that right so um, Unless they made new weapons in the future, I think they, uh, they would have 
um, you know, they would have just stuck that into another weapon or something like that uh, as a means of getting around, um, I guess, dev time, like cut some dev time down. And, you know, but at the same time, you know, spice up the variety a little bit too. So it, it kind of works both ways in this case. I think it's fine. Um, I think it's pretty clever from a more like a project standpoint as someone who, who has dealt with, you know, with projects and you want to do like shortcuts and stuff like that to help uh, meet the due time and stuff like that in college. Um, I, I think it's pretty clever, right? And it works. I think it's fine. Uh, so either way, uh, I'm pretty excited for Hazo, and I do want to pull for him uh, along with Kazuha. Kazuha is going to be coming for a rerun finally. We've all been waiting for it. I think it's pretty awesome. And, um, you know, he, and Hazel's going to be in the same banner. So th this is going to be the golden banner, man. This is going to be um, a really good banner no matter what, pretty much. Because you're pulling for, um, not only for Hazo, a cool four-star character who's a Nemo and stuff like that. Um, Kazuha, man. Ka Kazuha is definitely one of the, the big ones. The, the One of the best units in the game. Uh, especially from the Nemo side of things, you know, uh, along with Venti and stuff like that. I think Venti is still uh, relevant. Uh, it's just that Kazuha is a little more, you know, um, compatible during during exploration and stuff like that. And still does really good for crowd control and stuff like that during the actual combat of things. So I think, um, you know, he's still uh, really good. It's just that Kazuha does some things better than him for sure. So that's why, you know. It definitely works, and Kazuha, you know, makes him that makes him like really, really good, um, no matter what. So, I think characters like him will be relevant for a very long time, especially with uh, you know, you know, something else that was announced. But anyway, I think um, you know it's uh, looking pretty good. The banner is looking pretty good. Not only we're getting Kazuha, but we're getting Klee at the same time as a dual banner thing. Uh, so. If anyone who wants Cleave for like the character or something like that, or just for the fun of it, wants to get more constellations for Cleave, there you go. There's another opportunity, and not only that, you still have say uh, Hazel in that same sort of time, uh, I guess, uh, in, the, in that same schedule. So I think it's all um, pretty awesome. We're also getting uh, Yoimiya in the mix uh, in phase two of this update, so I think it's also pretty cool. For those who do want Yoimiya uh, constellations, I think she's also a good unit too. Um, she is a really good uh, DPS unit if you are into just like chipping away enemies real fast, because her damage really comes from her skill and not so much her burst. So you don't really have to like build her for, for recharge. So you don't have to ha you have to worry about any recharge stats in your substats uh, in your ar uh, artifacts. And yeah, so I think uh, she'll definitely be a good one to pick up if you haven't already, because she she does damage. Uh, she definitely does damage. She has help, she has helped me out in the abyss, you know, in certain situations where you need distance and stuff like that, or just like really need to like mow down people real fast um, without having to rely on a burst. That's why I kind of use her during um, the bish uh, the bishops or whatever that you know sap away your energy. Um, she helps out in that situation because she doesn't need energy because her skill is what the, what does the most damage in that situation so i think she's a real good unit in that in that regard um she's a s uh s tier damage unit i think and yeah so she is a good pickup uh if you, if you haven't already and if you're willing to spend uh, that um your primo gems there too i think uh, she's a good pickup in my opinion the other ones that root that do come to mind is of course the that like the story that comes on come uh, that comes along with it we are getting a new island of sorts so we're, we're getting like the the apalago or whatever, whatever you call it uh now featuring uh, official this time around instead of a uh, clee and uh we're just gonna go on an adventure it's pretty uh, i think it'll be like a one of those like cute ones right because it's featuring official of course oz and not only that, but we're getting Shinyan, which is pretty pretty random, but all right, um, I'll, I'll take it. And Mona, um, and also Kazuha. So I think it's a pretty interesting grouping for this uh, for this story. And not only that, we're getting uh, the official, uh, official costume, 
uh, the four star costume so that will be free for us to grab uh, from the event as long as we play the event of course and then there is the actual five star costume for D Luke. It's actually five star because it comes with new animations and stuff like that. It looks really updated. Actually, looks really awesome. And there's a story behind it too because he looks like something from Fatui or whatever, and his vision is well not visible. So um, this may be like him either going undercover or he he's just wearing his father's costume or whatever as some means. Or he's maybe gone to the dark side or something. I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. Maybe um, he has his raisins and stuff like that. So hopefully we can find out in the uh, backstory of this costume, however we may. And hopefully we, we um, those answer answers will come up uh, for Neeluk. Why is this costume a thing and whatever? Why is this, this why is this and why that why is that and all that in between. So um, the other cool thing that do that does come to mind. Of course, is the last part of the the announcement, which was a Sumeru. A Sumeru was shown off a little bit. It was teased. Um, I was I did watch it in the uh, the uh, trailer for from the Japanese side of things, and it does look really cool. I, I really do like the greens. Right, there's a lot of greens in there. Um, it looks great. Like it's just the design overall, the colors. I mean. Um, but the structuring of everything, the, the leaves, the foliage, the, just that plant uh, vegetation and stuff like that. The overall sort of use of design with the trees and plants and just um, botanical life and stuff like that looks really awesome. Uh, I do like it for what it is and I, look, I think it will be another fun region to explore. There's going to be, uh, from what I've heard... Um, a lot more puzzles, a lot more things to discover, and that means, you know, more more gems and stuff like that to pick up along the way. So, hopefully that's a thing. But either way, um, we are getting a new region. You know, it's been confirmed. Uh, I think we're going to just gonna go go straight into Genshin point, uh, 3.0. Uh, just because of, I, I believe that's how, what happens in Genshin Impact anyway with these updates. We just jump right into 3.0 after 2.8 or 1.8 or whatever. So, I believe that's what happened. And so um, I, I'm definitely excited for it. Now it does, you know, it does make make me a little concerned about how Hoyoverse has been doing things with this game, which is basically nothing, if you know what I mean. Like they, they they've done all these like mini games and stuff like that. They haven't really done much to sort of like re innovate the game or anything like that, or really like help out the players with what actually needs to be updated, like like the up um some of the gameplay mechanics, some of the Menu navigation and God, we need more teams, man. We need more team slots. Um, besides just four, like geez, Louise, we have more characters. Like, come on, man. We need we need more slots to have more teams and such. I, I think it would be pretty helpful, in my opinion. Like, <laughs> you know, it get it does get tiresome um, with switching around with just four teams. Like, dude, come on, man. Uh, hopefully, that will be a, a an update. That can happen um, during at least 3.0 anyway, because we're getting a bunch of bunch of characters, man. And I have seen the characters online, and boy, do they look interesting, right? And there's been some discrepancies with the archon, uh, the archon that's um, supposed to be uh, in for Sumeru, and uh, you know, um, and there's this like dumb like argument about the whole like dark skin thing, like, like. You know, while it would be nice, it's I don't think it's something you, that really needs to be stirred up in that matter. Um, like, <laughs> I mean, th there's plenty of counter arguments with that, and I think, um, I I think people shouldn't just be so focused on that, and it's just like take it for what it is, and you know, there's plenty of other problems that the game has, right? So. You know the resin thing, the just the overall gameplay and um, the updates that come with it. You know the mini games are just not really enough. I feel so. While yes, Sumeru does look pretty and all that stuff, it's gonna be the same cycle. I feel like once we're done or we're, we're done with like most of Sumeru, it's gonna be the same thing over and over and over again until we see another region and then the region after that and and all that stuff. So. 
it does make me a little concerned there too um, of, of the for the future of Genshin Impact. Now, from a business standpoint, I don't think there's an issue with that because they've already made money. They've already met their goal. It did it did make money, and and that's that's fine for them, I guess. But when it comes to us players. It sucks because I do really like the world of Genshin and I do want to see how the story ends, but I just worry that this is this could be possible that it'll come to an end before it reaches to it to its actual end and stuff. Which would be which would be a damn shame. And so, um, especially with after what happens when, you know, you you rescue your sibling or whatever, right? Whether you're Aether or Lumine, um, you know, after you rescue your sibling, it's like well, now what, you know, and and uh, what would happen after? Like, are they just gonna like do these like small updates um, from there on out, and just mainly focus on like Star Rail and um, the ZZZ game or whatever, right? Um, <laughs> like, it's gonna be pretty pretty. Um, I guess interesting in that sense. It does make me feel curious about how they're gonna do things for uh, for the rest of Genshin. So that's pretty much like how I mainly feel as a whole. Um, while I am excited for the upcoming updates with Hazel and Sumeru and all that stuff, it does make me concerned about everything else. If Hoyoverse doesn't like really up their game on like updating and stuff like that to really cater to the players and all that stuff. You know, um, gameplay-wise, of course, uh, it, like th there's been there's been a good number of people like leaving and stuff like that. People have already left like early on, but now like more and more like of the major content creators for Genshin are gonna be leaving. Not that it would make me leave or anything like that, but you know, if that uh, makes other people leave, right? It, you know, creates this like domino effect. Um, Hoyoverse might look look at it as like, oh, well, they're leaving and um, they're kind of done with this game. It looks like so we're just gonna really halt the updating down and down to maybe what Honkai Impact th uh, um, third or th third impact <laughs> Honkai Impact third or three whatever is gonna like that's what it's gonna be right like it's just gonna be a game that's just kind of in the background and. Again, maybe some maybe some updates here and there, and maybe I could be. I mean, um, um, please correct me because I don't play Honkai Impact, and so I don't know what the update cycle is like for that game for right now. As of right now, like is this is this still relevant? Like is it just not in the spotlight as much because of Genshin Impact? You know, maybe that's what it's gonna be like, right? And once like Star Rail is gonna, you know, come out along with the ZZZ shooter or whatever, maybe that, those games are going to be like the spotlight games, the new hotness, and then Genshin is going to be like quiet in the background and stuff like that. So, um, which would be a little weird, to uh, truth, uh, truthfully told, because it's such a popular game right now that if it does become like that game in the future, it's like, wow, what a what a jump, right? So... Um, but yeah, um, uh, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything else, really. I don't think, um, I'm really forgetting anything else from 2.8 livestream. Other than, like, the minigame stuff, I'm not really gonna cover that. Um, it, it is what it is. You just kinda just get in there and grab your Primo Gems, and that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, man. Like, unfortunately, one of the memorable things from that whole 2.8 livestream was just how hot ass it was, man. Like, jeez. Like, come on. Hopefully that won't happen, but... Yeah, it's just, it's just what it is, man. Right now. That's just how it happened. So, a lot of rewinding, a lot of uh, skipping, and a lot of lagging and locking up, man. It was it was pretty bad. But anyway, that's all I got uh, for 2.8 Livestream. That's my thoughts on it. So, thank you very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out, and I do appreciate it, guys. If you have any comments about 2.8, please uh, leave me down below. Um, I would... More, be more than happy to check them out because I always am curious about how people feel about these things. Uh, what do you guys think of Sumeru? What do you guys think of Hazo and all the other cool little updates, the costumes? But what do you guys think of the future of Genshin Impact? If anyone wants to share that in the comment section below, I'll be more than glad to check them out, man. Um, all, you know, I'm always open for discussion and stuff like that. 
uh, here on this channel. And, um, you know, this is uh, how I am, man. I, like, uh, I just want to share my, my thoughts and love for the games I play. And I want to see how people feel about that. So, anyways, uh, that's it for uh, to my 2.8 talk and thoughts about that for this Ho uh, Hawks Hawks episode. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in the next video. Sean out.